Hey everybody, this is Danielle Loduca, the Muslim next door. With all that's happening in the world, especially in the media, Islam has been shrouded in controversy. Fears are being stoked and Muslims everywhere are being eyed with caution that often borders on suspicion, guilt by association. Many question, is Islam at fundamental odds with American ideals? Can Muslims peacefully coexist with the rest of the world? Is Islam inherently dangerous? In this series, Myths About Islam, we debunk common myths regarding Islam by exploring facts and looking at these questions from alternative perspectives. In part one, we will deal with the myth that Islam is foreign to American history. Some of those sitting in front of their televisions may get the idea that Islam is new to the West, foreign, an invader even, but a closer look reminds us that Islam has been a part of America for centuries. For example, Bampet Muhammad was just one of the Muslims who served in George Washington's army between 1775 and 1783. He fought for American independence at the Virginia Line. The American Founding Fathers promised religious freedom for all, specifically mentioning Islam in their writings. Thomas Jefferson, quoting John Locke in 1776, said, Neither pagan, nor Muslim, nor Jew, ought to be excluded from the civil rights of the Commonwealth because of his religion. Richard Henry Lee, Virginia senator and one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence said, true freedom embraces the Muslim and the Hindu as well as the Christian religion. Thomas Jefferson owned a translation of the Quran. It still exists today and was used at the swearing-in of Congressman Keith Ellison, one of several politicians serving our nation as our forefathers envisioned. Hundreds of Muslims fought in the War of 1812 to preserve American independence, and later in the Civil War. In 1887, Alexander Russell Webb, son of a Christian preacher, embraced Islam and started a newspaper called The Muslim World. He established a mosque in New York City and was the representative of Islam at the first parliament of the world's religions in 1893. Historian Edward Curtis writes in his book, Muslims in America, that Alexander Russell Webb used his publications to promote Islam as a religion that expressed some of America's most deeply held values, especially those of rationality, human equality, broad-mindedness, and acceptance of religious diversity. In 1935, the Prophet Muhammad was honored in the chambers of the United States Supreme Court as one of the greatest lawgivers of history. Perched above the press seating area inside the United States Supreme Court chamber is a marble frieze depicting a symbolic image of the Prophet Muhammad amongst other great lawgivers of history. These facts and many more prove that Islam is embedded in the fabric of our American history. Don't miss part two where we tackle the myth that Islam promotes a clash of civilization. Help us promote peaceful coexistence through education and critical thinking. Thanks for watching.